Okay, so in this talk we are going to discuss how to find the absolute max and min for a continuous function f on an interval a b. It's a closed interval, bounded, and it includes both endpoints. Okay, and we know by the extreme value theorem that there exists an absolute maximum and there exists an absolute minimum. Okay, and the question is how do you find it? So here's what we want to find. We want to find the absolute maximum value. There's a single absolute maximum value. Mm -hmm. Absolute minimum value. There's a single absolute minimum value. And all the points in the domain where these values are attained. So all the points where the absolute maximum value is attained. And all the points where the absolute minimum value is attained. Mm -hmm. And so one way you could do this is you could say let's first try to solve the problem of finding local and endpoint extrema. Okay. So this is will go in two steps, right? Mm -hmm. Step one would be find all points of local max local min endpoint max and endpoint min. Well endpoint max endpoint min just basically means the points A and B. Are they is A a max or min from the right and is B a max or min from the left. Okay? So, so there's at most two points going on in these total. Okay? Uh, local max min are points in the interior of the domain where, so in the open interval AB, which are local max min. Now what you do is, well, okay, so the main factor you're using is this. Any point of absolute max is either a point of local max or a point of endpoint max if for a function on an interval. Mm -hmm. Okay, and any point of absolute min is either a point of local min or a point of endpoint min. And because we know the absolute max and absolute min do exist, these are precisely the candidates. Okay? okay, so we know that we got all the candidates. So local max and the endpoint max are precisely the candidates for the absolute max, and the local min and endpoint min are precisely the candidates for the absolute min. Now, how do you compare, how do you figure out within these candidates which one is right? Compare the values. Yeah. So evaluate at all these points and compare. Okay. Now when you're looking for the max, you can of course take the maximum of all the values, but you don't have to. For the max, you just have to look at this and this and take the maximum on those values. Right? So if your goal was only to find the absolute max, then you didn't don't have to evaluate at these points. Just evaluate here and here and see what's the largest of those. If your goal is only to find the absolute min, you just evaluate here and here and see what's the smallest of those. Okay? Mm -hmm. And so evaluate and compare. The largest value will give you the absolute maximum value and all the points where that value is attained are the points of attainment of absolute maximum. Similarly, the smallest value among these will give you the absolute minimum and all the points among these where it's attained are the points of, of uh, attainment. Okay. Uh, now, there's a little sh sort of, I would say, shortcut, though it may not always save you time, is, is, is instead of finding the local max and local min, you sort of start off the same procedure, but you don't follow it all the way through to find local max min. Because remember, to find local max min, what do we do? We start off by finding the critical points. But then we apply some derivative test, like the first derivative test or the second derivative test to figure out whether it's a local max or min. But if your only goal is to find the absolute max or min, you don't actually have to figure out for each critical point whether it's a local max min, because anyway you're going to evaluate and compare. And if it is the absolute maximum, then it will come out to be the absolute maximum. If it is the absolute minimum, it will come out to be the smallest. You don't have to figure out for each critical point whether it's a local max or min. Okay, so this is a sort of possibly shorter, usually shorter. Okay, uh, critical points, and you also have to include the endpoints. Okay, because of the endpoints and the endpoint extrema, you're now not going to figure out whether the endpoints are max min, but you are, you have to include them in the evaluate and compare. 
the absolute maximum it could be at that point. Now, could you just explain what I said about uh, about not needing uh, to use the derivative test to figure out whether it's a local maximum? Hmm? Well, because you just want to compare the values, so you don't have to figure out which is the maximum. Which local maximum, because anyway, like so. So if you did this, you would get more information, right? You would you would in addition to knowing the absolute maximum, you would also know which points are points of local max, which points are points of local min. If you did it this way, you would just get a whole bunch of critical points. You would evaluate, figure which is the absolute max, which is the absolute min. You wouldn't have, know which of the other critical points were local maxima or minima. But in some sense, that doesn't matter, right? Mm -hmm. That's not what we set out for. But so, so, so in, in some way, this saves you effort of finding the, uh, of using the derivative test. However, in another sense, this could be more work. Why? Well, there could be a lot more critical points than points of local maximum, right? Mm -hmm. So the the set you get here could be a lot bigger than the set you get here. Because there could be many critical points at which the function actually uh, doesn't have either a local max or a local min. So you may end up evaluating the function at a lot more points. Hmm? Yeah. So, so what's the trade-off between these? Well, the trade-off is between using the derivative test to, to sort of uh, reduce the size of the set on which you're evaluating versus evaluating directly. So what we really have is we have a trade-off with deciding whether to do it this way or this way. You could do it either way. It's a trade-off between evaluating the function and using the derivative test. Well, what does the derivative test usually involve? Usually what? What do you have to do for the derivative test? Usually you have to evaluate a derivative, right? Mm -hmm. So if you, if you were to first find the local maximum, you would have to do more evaluations of the derivative, right? To figure out whether at a given point you have a maximum. Mm -hmm. If on the other hand, you skip that step and you directly came and said, I'm just going to directly all the critical points, I'm just going to evaluate and compare. You have to evaluate the function, the function f at more points, but you uh, sort of don't have to do as many evaluations of f prime. You don't have to do the sign analysis for f prime or f double prime or something, right? So that's a trade off. Depending on whether your function is easier to evaluate than derivative, you can choose which of these is is better. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see if there's any. Yeah, and and moreover, uh, so if you have to find both absolute max and absolute min, then these procedures are not very different, right? In the sense you have to evaluate at all of these. But if you have to find only absolute max, it may make sense to first filter down to local max only and then evaluate because that's a very much smaller set of points to evaluate than all critical points. Okay. 